I'm a full-time solo female traveler. And the scariest thing that has ever happened to me on the road just happened about three months ago. And I have been torn since then on whether or not I should tell you guys about it. But something really shocking happened after the fact. And I've decided just to keep it real and tell you guys all about it. Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. I'm doing great. As you can see, I am traveling in my little baby Airstream as a solo female, and I've been on the road now for seven years. And so in that time, of course, I've seen a couple of sketchy things happen. But if you guys follow my channel, you know that RV life literally saved me that this has been the best thing I've ever done. So I'm always kind of reticent to tell people when scary things happen um, because, you know, I want people to know that this is a viable way to live their life and it's rad and that I love it. I've done a couple of videos in the past, you know, talking about somebody taking pot shots over my head or getting the knock on the door, but most of the time, the things that have scared me on the road were things I caused myself. <laughs> like going down the wrong road. But that was not the case about three months ago when I was camping near the Superstition Mountains, just between Apache Junction, Arizona and Superior, Arizona. Halfway in between, I could go to the Planet Fitness on one side and work out and take a shower and go to the Boyce Thompson Arboretum to hike on the other side, which I fell in love with. But when I drove in to this area, I did not love it. Now I'll tell you guys that I didn't keep my dash cam footage from them. So I'm gonna show you some other footage from another YouTuber who showed the entryway into this camping area. Now this is Arizona State Trust Land. You're supposed to have a permit, but nobody does. You drive through kind of a suburban area. And then once you get in there, it's like RVs and schoolies everywhere and they don't leave. They are not just there for the 14 days. And on top of that, this is near the Peralta Road Trailhead, which is really popular. So there's ATVers and hikers and people on horseback and it's really, really crowded. Well, I found a little plateau to camp on that was between about six other people. We were all cramped in there. There was room for about one other rig right next to me. And originally I was hooked up in my camper and people kept trying to like horn in on that space. I thought another friend of mine was coming to camp with me. So I unhooked my car and faced it the opposite direction. So I was not hooked up to leave. Let the comments begin. There were some tent campers right next to me and down the hill, there were a bunch of other RVers. And you know, here's the first thing I did wrong. I've been on the road a long time and I think I just got a little comfortable especially since there were a lot of other people around. So I was standing right where I am now. I was working at the kitchen, filming actually me chopping some vegetables because I'm doing a video on how to extend your food. And the music was blaring and the door was open, but the screen door was shut. Behind the music, I hear a male voice go, hello. And I turned around and there was a dude standing outside my screen door, just looking in at me. This dude did not look like a camper. It was the desert and he was wearing a leather jacket and some cut off pants and he had really long red hair and like a porn stash, looked like a biker, but he had a big smile on his face. The smile that he had, frankly, was too big. So the first thing I did was I put on my game face, not the friendly Robin you guys are used to seeing. I went over and I leaned my hand against the wall because I have a weapon there and I wanted him to know that I had a weapon there. And he looked at me and he looked at my arm and I just said, yeah, what's up? 
That big smile came back to his face and he said, yeah, yeah, hi. I'm just wondering if you can help me. And he had his phone in his hand, like he was turning it, like he wanted to show it to me. And he said, I reserved a campsite right here. And my GPS brought me right here, but I don't see it. Can you help me? Now, the whole time when he was turning his phone, my feeling was that he wanted me to come outside and look at his phone. Meanwhile, he's looking around behind me like he wants to see if there's anybody with me or maybe what I had inside of my rig. So I just kept my hand on the wall and kept on the stink face and just said, nope, nope, there's no paid camping around here. You know, in national forest land, you can't have paid camping like within a mile of boondocking locations or dispersed camping locations. And when I searched for camping, there was no other camping around. So I knew that this guy was not legit. He didn't dress like a camper. He didn't sound like a camper. And why would he come up to my rig? There were other people before me. The 10 campers were to my right. And if he had just gone down the road another mile, he would have been back in the suburbs. And I had a cell signal there. So I'm not sure what the problem was. So as you can tell, I was not buying it. And he just went on and on. I think he was there for a good three or four minutes, even though I was not friendly and I was not helpful. He kept saying, yeah, but it says it's right here. And I reserved campsite 31. And I just kept saying, I can't help you. I can't help you. He just kept trying to chat me up in an overly friendly way, trying to get me to come outside, look at his phone, looking around me. And so I took a moment to lean forward and look to my right out my screen door to see if the tent campers that were right next to me were still there. We were only separated by a couple of bushes. And that couple was standing next to each other, frowning, looking my direction. So I knew that they also thought this was weird, but that they were keeping an eye out. Finally, the guy left. And I ran over to the window. and got a clip of his truck, which by the way, did not look like it had any camping equipment. Um, you can see it here, I have blurred out his license plate. But what I did immediately was I locked the door and then I texted his license plate with a description of him to two of my friends and I just said, look, creepy guy just came up to my door just in case. This is what he looks like, this is the license plate. And these were two friends that I share my location with all the time for my safety. Then, I spent about an hour beating myself up because my back was turned to the screen door when it was shut. But look, I know people are going to say in the comments, don't ever do that and be ready to go and always have out two camp chairs, which I did. But I'm living in here full time. I need airflow. The door is going to be open. What I decided to do was lock myself in here with my weapons. One of my most popular videos, as you guys might know, is called RV Weapons. It was from a few years ago, and I like to call this rig Home Alone 2.0, okay? So when I'm in here, I feel pretty confident that I can protect myself. What really got me is that my door was open and only the screen door was shut, and there's no lock there, and he could have come right in. And I know people are going to say, well, if you had a van or an all-in-one, you could have just driven away. That is true. And that is on my mind. But if I was in a van, the door would have been slid all the way open. Somebody else could come in that way also. I've lived in mostly cities my entire life and way scarier things have happened to me as a person or a woman in the city than this. I don't think that I have to worry more because I'm a solo female about being attacked because, hear me out, statistically, most people are hurt or killed by somebody that they are with. Although I do know that if something happens to me, it's going to be harder for me to call out and help is going to take much more time to get here. And that's why I keep things in here to protect myself. But still, I was beating myself up because I got a little comfortable and the music was playing and my back was to the door because I was surrounded by other people. First thing the next morning at dawn, I hooked up and was out of there. So as you can hear in my voice, this really gave me pause. Not about being on the road. Look, I worked too hard and too long to have this life for anybody to scare me off the road. 
all I can do is protect myself and do the best that I can. And when I say that this gave me pause, it did, but I think actually in a good way because uh, it's made me remember that I need to be a little bit more vigilant and maybe I need to use the gear outside that I have and maybe I need to get some cameras installed in here. Now, let me give you the big confession. After that, while I was deciding if I should do this video, I went back and did some research about that area and I found some articles about how RVers are trashing that area and the locals are trying to get it shut down and that they've had a lot of problems out there. But I also found that there was a new campground just about three miles from where I was and that Google Maps couldn't even get there yet and that there were 31 campsites. And then you guys, I felt like a real asshole <laughs> for about a month. And that's what I've been thinking about. Now, I'm keeping it real with you guys. This freaked me out. And it turns out that guy could have been just a camping dude looking for his location. But you know, I've given it a lot of thought and I think, um, I think he was shady. Shady AF, you know what I'm saying? He definitely was looking to see if I was alone. He was definitely looking to see what was in here. He was too friendly. I didn't see any camping gear. He was trying to get me to come outside. This guy could have been a camper, but I think he was also a creeper. And a takeaway for me is that I'm going to trust my gut. Um, I knew it the second he walked up and the second I saw him. And um, I'm not going to second guess myself into thinking that I should have been a nicer person. That doesn't protect me out here on the road. And I can only imagine what's going to happen in the comments below this video. Like, women shouldn't travel alone and you shouldn't be solo and you should have a gun, blah, blah, blah. From here on out, what I'm going to do is make sure that I have my motion sensor on outside. I have another one where the motion sensor goes off and a bell rings inside. And so I think... I might dig that one out because I haven't used it in a while. And you guys, I will link all of this um, in my Amazon store under as recently seen on YouTube. So you can hit one link and then the things I'm talking about will be there. And I've been looking for some kind of a lock that can go on my screen door so that when I'm in here, at least it gives me another second before somebody can bust in. But I haven't found a good one yet. If you guys know of anything good, please put it in the comments below. Remember to share your location with people that you trust in real time. It's free to do that. I do it through Google Maps. And if anybody wants to see what gear I've been using, I'll link the RV weapons video up here. I'll see you guys next week with an all new video. Until then, everybody out there, have happy travels. Don't let anybody scare you. And be free.